Welcome to my crib. <laughs> we live in a community with a lot of different people in kind of a co-housing situation and we were just feeling like we needed kind of our own space but not wanting to leave that group because we have a lot of things shared we have our garden and, and chickens and came across this bus for sale converted already so this seemed like a really achievable next step we can like park this thing in our yard it's still be able to have our community, but have our own kitchen, have our own food, have like a place to retreat to. And that was really nice. International 1991, the roof was raised 18 inches. That was a big deal. Really wanted it to feel spacious and breathe. That really helped. So that was uh, a big one for sure. In terms of water, right now we just hooked up to the hose. We have a gray water runoff, a little gray water tank that we can go into. We also right now are just on a graded slope. We use all biodegradable products and that allows us to pretty much just send it into the ground, which has been really awesome. We will be drink digging a French drain though, because even with our grade getting a little swampy, especially in the Northwest winters. Power, just an RV hookup. We have it coming from our shop. So that was pretty easy. Our breaker box is stashed behind the cat food, dog treats, simple, easy. Heat in the winter, this little guy right here. Really surprised at how efficient this little thing is. In the coldest part of the winter, we did have a little space heater, but most of the time, especially if we can kind of get this going first thing in the morning and then feed it something real dense right before we go to bed, the heat is just kind of turning all night long and then having the tile all around it is kind of really good at reflecting all that heat into the space. One of the really interesting features that I found on this International is all of these surfaces that they put up in the driver's area. At one point we talked about just ripping all of it out, you know, because we're gonna be pretty stationary and we're fairly confident on that. For resale purposes, we decided to keep it. And then it's just kind of interesting. And so I really love this entryway because I decided to just make them all these cascading shelves of different sizes and unique shapes and so they're all over and I just topped them with plywood again but that was like a really fun experience of getting to just put random shapes and we get to move our plants in different places and I really like this entryway a lot. This is a really important piece to me and to Lauren. This serves a few different purposes. One, there's like the psychological purpose of dividing the space. It's a fairly substantial object, and so that was why we made the decision to introduce a pegboard here. A, it lets light through, and I think that's really cool. B, there's like a functional aspect to it, obviously, and that is, it's a pegboard. And so the cool thing about the pegboard having the holes go all the way through is that I can have my leash over here, and then I decide, okay, I wanna use this peg over here and you know, I could hang some bags on this. You know, I could decide, okay, now this one is gonna go elsewhere. I can put my leash back over here. We can put more shelves on these, which is always fun. It just allows it to kind of grow and transform with how we're using it that week. So then this face has Forbo furniture grade linoleum on it. It's a cool recycled material. And then the other side we just left with the finished plywood. Partially we wanted this to kind of tie in to these lighter surfaces. And also, it's just a soft material, it's really nice. And then it's just got the little switch ingrained into it. On the other side is all my Frisbees, because I like playing Frisbee. Right now, we're in the summertime, so we don't have a bunch of wet shoes, but normally we'll stick wet shoes and stuff in there in the winter. So one of the spaces where we spend a lot of time, because we both love to cook, is in the kitchen, and it's actually worked really well for us. One of the things that drew me to this bus was the kitchen and then the full-size bathtub. I thought those were really special. Things that I would have included if we had done the full conversion of the bus as well. So we have this gas range and then the full-size sink and the fridge in between that, it makes it a nice, easy workstation to be able to get stuff out and prep it or wash what you need and then cook. And then we have a little dining area over here. One of the major changes that we made was um, this counter came out to about here and we shaved it down because I kept hitting my hip on it. It's like at the perfect height for that. And we used to have two stools, which was really nice for dining together, but we've talked about getting 
kind of stacking stools so that they can actually be put away under the counter versus being so large and kind of hard to navigate around. And then these pillows were from a friend who went to Morocco and brought us back these like perfectly sized couch cushions. We had been looking for something for a while. This is typically our wood storage area in the winter. Right now we have all of our appliances. This is our trash. In here we have just silverware and then typical storage on the counters. One thing that we did do a lot in here is we put in a bunch of these pullouts so that it's really easy to access things and so that there's a lot of organization. Container store is my best friend. I'm a big fan of mugs. This is my favorite mug. Morton Salt. It feels very appropriate for our times right now. Yeah, we love having all our mugs hung up there. This was originally a, like a little crib area that was fully built out and that's awesome, but Lauren and I definitely like our clothing. I have a lot of clothes between the two of us, so we decided to basically dedicate this entire area to being a closet. There's a few elements that I find to be really interesting. Mainly it's this thing. So wanting to find a space for a mirror and being able to kind of like nest it in, that was a big one for us. And so this thing's heavy. We had this mirror custom cut and then I put a single caster on it here. And then if you want to look on the back side, so these are just heavy duty drawer slides with the caster and then a lot of like really meticulous kind of interior work to make sure this whole thing is level when it pulls out. It ended up working pretty well and then it just kind of nests in there. So that was a fun one. We had made a lot of concessions around, okay, we have to get rid of a lot of stuff and it is so unnecessary, but it's also like a, an aspect of our lifestyle. Like Lauren and I like getting dressed up and going out to dinner, although with the pandemic, that's, we still dress up and we just take ourselves out to uh, the yard. The process of moving into the bus, you have to get rid of a lot of things and you make a lot of concessions. Within that, we had to really pay attention to what are the things that are important? What are the, some of the things that we get a lot of pleasure out of? And the decision on the closet was like, okay, this is an area where we're going to not just like pinch every inch out of what we can get from our storage. And we really leaned into, okay, we like our closet. We want to have a big mirror that's okay. Like it's, it's good that it's just that way. It makes sense for us. And if somebody eventually takes over this bus and they don't want that, like, that's awesome. You know, you make it yours. The bathroom's probably our least finished room. We have this incinerating toilet that we got, which is an alternative to a composting toilet. We previously had a composting toilet, but we had some issues with that, with our heating unit in it, especially when it was cold outside. And so we decided we didn't want to deal with any leakage anymore and completely switched what we were doing. It's not quite installed yet. So we just have to retile this area. That will be done soon. This is really nice. We have our opening medicine cabinet in here with a little plug so we can charge our toothbrushes and different organization. Cutie, come on. This is QT the cat. We also have a full size bathtub. I love baths. It's pretty much an essential for me in the winter. Kind of the only way to get warm. Really glad that we have that. So we have our, our bedroom, which is where we do our family Zoom calls on the weekends. And we have a very sophisticated TV system that involves a clip-on arm that comes down for our iPad. It's uh, Michael Scott status. <laughs> I love it. I love this TV. We, uh, yeah, we spend a lot of time in here lounging. It's kind of the most cozy lounge area. We have our two-in-one LG direct drive uh, washer dryer, which has been surprisingly awesome. This thing is a beast and it takes a while, but is, is great. Put it in, it takes about three hours, then you have washed and dried clothing. That's awesome. There was some thoughts initially around maybe covering all of this. The reality is, is like, that just doesn't make sense. We access it so much. The priority that we put was, again, exposing our ply and really being meticulous about even and intentional spacing. So the storage areas are larger down here and then slightly smaller up here. Emphasizing texture in 
our storage bins. If we're gonna keep them exposed, we want them to feel interesting texturally, but not stand out. So these are just simple things, but they have this nice texture to them. And then these wool pull-out bins, this is the dogs. The single greatest thing that we may have for keeping this cl bus clean, and I would suggest it to anyone who's living in a small space, is this bad boy. This is the Dyson, I don't really know the make and model, but it's got all these different attachments. You can just get into all your nooks and crannies, and then we keep our large one right here. Doop, doop, doop. It is a game changer, because you just can keep your place clean, and it's easy for a small space to get dirty, and it's easy for it to get clean, and that's the beauty of it. We have a lot of art. This was uh, thrifted. It's a coconut shell. Will loves mermaids. It's his family's thing, loves the sea. This is our bug-eyed hooligan. Will's uncle made that. He has a whole series of them, but that's bug-eyed hooligan number one. And then we have these like little figurines of our cat and dog. <laughs> Pretty much our favorite thing, I think, is our little sun catcher to get the rainbows going in here. It's really nice in the golden hour. Kind of the, the overarching umbrella that, that brings this whole property together is in here. It's Nook Studios. It's, a, it's our design firm. We do uh, interior architecture and fabrication. This is somewhat of a prototyping facility. And also we do a lot of our production at volume here. So all sorts of things. We got concrete because we're making concrete molds. These are all pieces for uh, the climbing gym in New York City that we're building out. It's called Vital Climbing Gym in Brooklyn. It'll be the largest climbing gym in New York State. We've been working on that project for going on two years. The scale is in the hundreds and hundreds of pieces total, which has been a huge jump for us, but really exciting. Then the other thing like that we're working on simultaneously is this bus. It's a prototype for one of our owners, uh, Noah, and so it will be his home. We raised it 22 inches. She's a big one. It's still in process. They've done some amazing stuff with it. They extended it back three feet after the 22 foot raise. So that's gonna be their bedroom back there. We just are so excited to see this thing come to fruition. And then the bus that you see behind it is Dylan's bus. We are gonna be building that one out afterwards. We're really looking at applying all of the things that we've learned over the last three years within furniture and space build outs to bring them in here and just make these things sing. So we kind of took this challenge on as a company by having some of the founders of our company actually purchase these to live in. And so we're taking it on as a project so that we can really experience them and live in them and therefore like learn how to improve them, not just be told six months later that this is breaking, but see, okay, like this is broken. What can we do different next time? That's gonna be really fun.